I'm not ready yet. That's the problem. These workshops before the meetings. I'm trying to find my packet. Okay, I'm going to call to order the City Council meeting of March 6, 2023 for Bayport, Minnesota. Let's all stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you want to call the roll, Matt? Yep. Uh, Councilmember Carlson? Aye. Councilmember Dahl? Present. Councilmember Gilmore? Present. Councilmember Hill? Present. Mayor Hansen? Here. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda, or does anyone have any changes not they need change to make? Anything. Okay. I don't think so, right? We decided not to change anything. I'll move to approve the agenda as presented. I will second it. All right. Thank you, Ethan and Connie. Uh, let's see. We just, it doesn't say. We have to roll call, and I can't ever remember. Just to approve, right? Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. All right. Well, then next is proclamations, commendations, petitions, and announcements. The February Recycling Award recipient is Kelly Trainer. Lives on Ninth Street North. Who will be awarded for recycling efforts with a grant from Washington County. Uh, and then next is the open forum. It's a portion of the meeting to address the city council on subjects that are not part of the meeting agenda. The city council may take action or reply at the time of the statement or may give direction to staff regarding investigation of comments expressed. Total of 15 minutes is allotted. Is anyone here for the open forum? Doesn't look like it. All right, so the next thing is our consent agenda. Uh, this is to consider a resolution adopting items 1 through 12. The February 6, 2023 City Council Workshop Minutes, the February 6 City Council Regular Meeting Minutes, February Payables and Receipts, February Building, Plumbing, Mechanical and Zoning Permits Report, Purchase of a Replacement Squad Vehicle for the Police Department, uh, No Waiver of the <coughs> Statutory Tort Liability Limits for City Insurance Coverage, Revision to the city's personnel policy to establish National Independence Day Juneteenth, Juneteenth as an observed holiday. Special event application from People's Church for a May festival on May 20th at Barker's Alps. Special event application from Anderson Elementary for Razzle Dazzle Carnival on May 18th, my birthday. Pay application number three, since we were all talking about birthdays before. Pay application number three to Pioneer Power for the Booster Station Improvement Project. Joint Powers Agreement with Washington County Sheriff's Office to purchase fuel for the police department. And a grant agreement with Met Council for the 2020 INI program. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion approving the consent agenda. Thanks, Karen. I second. Well, thanks, Katie. All right, roll call vote. you Matt <laughs> Hi, Mayor. Um, council member Carlson aye council member Dahl aye council member Gilmore aye council member Hill aye Mayor Hansen aye all right there's no public hearing tonight but we do have unfinished business we are going to consider an application <laughs> submitted by Nathan Jesperson for variances to allow an expansion of the existing substandard single-family home at 317 Lake Street South. Uh, Sarah's gonna present a nice summary. We've talked about it quite a bit, so. Thank you, Madam Mayor. To too much. At the February 6th meeting, the City Council considered variance requests to allow expansion of the existing substandard home at 317 Lake Street. 
The meeting concluded with the City Council approving variances to allow a north addition. The City Council subsequently tabled discussion regarding variances for an east addition to extend the footprint and roof line of the third floor, which is in violation of City setback regulations as proposed. At that time, the City Council expressed differing opinions as to whether state statutory criteria had been met to warrant approval of the variances. Since that time, the City Attorney and staff have provided further guidance on establishing findings of fact and conditions if the City Council seeks to vote in support of the variances. Staff uh, recommended conditions are primarily related to the mitigation um, of other non-conforming conditions on the property that do not comply with city ordinances and include the following. Removal of excess impervious surface to meet the 20% maximum required by ordinance. Implementation of enhanced landscaping between the house and the river to visually screen the existing structure and the proposed additions as viewed from the river. Implementation of enhanced stormwater management practices to effectively capture and treat drainage and runoff. And removal of the existing substandard non-conforming uh, remnant foundation of a boathouse to mitigate blight and improve the overall visual aesthetic of the property as viewed from the river. Based on the information provided, uh, the building official has determined the boathouse structure to be beyond the point of repair and re rehabilitation, uh, non-compliant with current building codes, and he also mentioned that it appears to be unsafe. So his specific comments have been provided for city council reference. Uh, staff does stand with the initial recommendation to deny the variances subject to the findings of fact outlined in the resolution in your packet. Uh, conversely, if the city council determines that criteria exist to substantiate approval of the variances, staff recommends the city council specifically articulate those findings of fact that support state statute criteria on the record, including but not limited to reasonableness, uniqueness, and essential character, subject to the conditions of approval recommended by staff, and then finally to authorize the city attorney and staff to draft and execute a resolution documenting the city council findings and conditions of approval. Uh, the specifics on how to address the conditions of approval will be discussed with the applicant at the staff level following this council meeting. Um, I defer to attorney Vivian if he has any other comments or? I don't. Um, the staff report articulated the appropriate legal standard for review, um, again, just to highlight reasonableness, uniqueness, and essential a character as being those three primary drivers uh, that you're required to make findings on, whether you approve or uh, deny the, app the application. Okay. So, um, like I said, we've had several discussions on this item. Not sure where everyone else stands, but I would be willing to make a motion just to kind of get the conversation started. And I would move to approve this variance. I have the findings of fact in, in front of me that would support approval of it, um, including the first four findings of fact that were listed already previously um, that were basic just information about the property uh, but I would go on to say that architecturally the existing house was designed with the third floor recessed in depth from the first and second floors resulting in a greater setback from the river and an extension of this third floor toward the river to meet the front building line of those first and second floors does not expand the overall footprint of the structure and does not result in an elevation beyond the specified limitations uh, also, the intent of the Lower St. Croix River Bluffland and Shoreland Management Ordinance is to protect and preserve existing natural and scenic values of the scenic river, as well as the vegetation, soils, topography, and environmental quality of the riverway. An extension of this third floor toward the river would not result in further visual encroachment toward the river, nor increase the building face of the overall structure. Additionally, conditions associated with the variance allow for increased measures to preserve the environmental quality of the riverway. And uh, another point is that at the December 19th, 2023 Bayport Planning Commission meeting, a motion to deny this variance failed by a vote of two to three. 
No formal motion was made by the Planning Commission to recommend approval to the council, just because of some errors in the way the meeting was held, but the three commissioners who opposed the denial clearly expressed support for the East Edition, so that the recommendation could have been that they would say to move forward with it. Um, the city would then find that the variance does meet the criteria of practical difficulties when applying the three-factor test required by Minnesota statute, specifically that the variance seeks to use the property in a reasonable way that is prohibited under the current ordinance, that the requested variance is due to unique physical characteristics of the land which prevent compliance with the current ordinance, not caused by the landowner or their personal preferences, and that the variance will not result in the structure being out of scale, out of place, or inconsistent with the character of the surrounding neighborhood. And then there's a couple other points that were also in the, about this, the statute and, and things that were in the original findings, but for that, I am making a motion to approve. Do I have a second? A second. All right, thanks, Ethan. Um, do I just do a regular vote? Uh, we have to roll do a roll discussion. call. You have to ask for discussion. Have some discussion. Yeah, oh, duh, yeah. Discuss. I just thought maybe, but technically, you're supposed to like approve a motion <clears throat> and then discuss, but we never usually do that. So, okay. Discussion. Boy, we're quiet. <laughs> uh, See, I feel like we should just vote, and if we don't pass it, then we just go with the plan B. But I feel like we've discussed it. Yeah, I was discussed say, I feel it. Like so I don't know. A lot. So that's. Uh -huh. I guess. Uh, do you guys understand the couple of the? things that we expect to happen before, you know, if we do approve it. The oh yeah, that's true. Hours, there would be conditions some on of that those, too. Some of the conditions, I'm not sure. I'm assuming you guys communicated that. We do um, have one question. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We, is this the time to, to talk about the conditions? Or, because I know that that's... I that's don't fine. know. That's yeah. Fine. yeah, if they have questions, you can have them come to the podium the and ask their council questions. council has questions? No, if they have. If they have, if they they have, have a question, questions. that's okay. Sure. All right. Want to step up here? Yeah. Yeah, I want to introduce yourself too, please. Um, I'm Nathan Jesperson. Hi, everybody. Um, I actually brought my family tonight. Um, so this is my daughter, my oldest daughter, Tori, and my youngest, Eliana. Um, I brought them here because I wanted them to see the all the action. And, what about uh, Sarah? You want to introduce her? Well, well I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I thought, you know, everyone had met, but this is my wife, Sarah, as well. Um, thank you again for the consideration. And uh, again, this has been several meetings, and uh, I just... Uh, Appreciate the time and energy you guys have been putting into this. So, um, as you guys are uh, discussing uh, whether to vote or not, I, I did review the considerations, and uh, I just uh, we we um, ran through all four of those considerations, um, and we're able to meet. We feel like we're able to meet three of them uh, without the boathouse, and um, uh, you know, I, I sent out the email earlier today, just kind of sharing that, so I won't go into great detail on that, save you guys the time, but, um, you know, I did want to reach out and just add a few extra bullets on this because the, the boathouse is, um, I, I view it as a, a kind of a really cool piece of, of, of history uh, on this area uh, or on this plot of land uh, that used to be owned by uh, the Anderson family. And, um, and I don't know the, the whole history of, of that area, but I know that it's, it's kind of a neat structure and we'd love to be able to preserve it. Um, we have, uh, you know, Minnesota provides protection for shoreline structures like this, specifically for reasons like this. I think, um, you know, when we bought the house, we were under the impression that that was gonna be uh, something that we could restore. In fact, the owner, um, specifically mentioned to me that they had a conversation, he had a conversation with the city, and I have the email here too, because I wanted to confirm this, but um, said that they, as long as you kept up at least one wall, we could repair the rest of it. Uh, he also said that to never take the tracks out, we have the tracks that go from the boathouse all the way down into the water. Um, those, are, those are still there and they're uh, still functional. Um, so we, and we do actually uh, use the boathouse. So um, it, it, it is not in great shape, uh, but we do put boats in it. It came with a boat in it. It has a small metal uh, rowboat. Um, and we also keep our 
some of our our uh, water toys in there as well. So uh, it's ugly and it probably is unsafe, uh, but it has been used. And so that's something that we want to uh, try to preserve as, as best we can. Um, we, we really would like to, we appreciate that you are considering this variance. We really hope to not include this as part of the discussion. Um, maybe there's something to, to discuss about whether this boathouse uh, should exist at all. <clears throat> um, and, and I'd like to learn more, but I, I'd really like to table that part of this for a different discussion. Cause there's a lot, I have a lot of questions like, why is it still there? You know, if it, if it was something that uh, was deemed as abandoned and uh, unsafe, then why didn't that go away a long time ago? Um, so that was the one thing I just wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I, I'd love it if we could take that off and maybe pull it for a different discussion. Uh, Cause we can meet the 20%. In fact, when you guys approved the North Edition, we you, you were approving it at a twenty three percent impervious. Uh, I worked with my architect to get down to you know, twenty point two percent, and we can get. I'm sure we can shave off something, a corner, a soft cut, or something. Uh, if we need to get to that twenty percent, we'll get there. Um, and uh, so, if you guys would entertain that in your discussion, I'd greatly appreciate it. Any questions on that? Well, thank you. Yeah, we'll have to. Go ahead. We do want to restore it, so if that was. Oh yeah. Of, we don't intend to keep it in its current condition. We want it restored and brought to the beauty or what it once was a long time ago. Yeah, I don't want to leave it that way. If you guys made that a, a condition, I would be okay with that. We'll fix it as a condition uh, for this. Um, in fact, I, I would appreciate that. I kind of wanted to keep it off of this discussion so we didn't have to go, you know, it's a detour from the what we're really talking about, in my belief. Um, and I just don't think it's, it has, I, I wish for it to not have a place here in this discussion, unless, unless you guys want to make it a condition to, to let us rebuild it because we will, or refurb it. I, I really appreciate that you sent us photos of it as well. So we kind of have an understanding of what it looks like and it's in really bad shape. And then we also got a picture of the, the vision of the boathouse. Um, so I appreciate that. How does everyone feel about include? So right now the conditions, which did she already read through them specifically? Um, the conditions include removal of the entire boathouse, in addition to the other impervious surface things and everything. Why is it so hard to find things? So even with that staying, you think you can still get to under 20%? Yeah. Of the impervious. Yeah. You already have it figured in one of those documents. Yeah, that's the first page of that document I sent you guys. As a, a boat owner, I don't live on the river, but I can totally appreciate that it would be nice to have a boathouse. So I, I get where you're coming from with that. Um, our, our building inspector sent a note saying, though, that it's really doesn't seem like it's in great shape. It doesn't conform to the current building codes. Appears to be unsafe. Um, and Madam, are, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I feel um, like we need Sarah more. can speak on to this, but uh, the, the restoration is, is essentially not allowed in our code. Um, she can provide yeah. some guidance on that. Madam Mayor. Please. Yeah, sure. Um, You've been provided with the building officials' comments based on the photos of the structure. Um, we also did receive some correspondence from the DNR. Um, the structure is substandard and nonconforming. It's located in the floodplain and the riverway district. And there's a point where you can maintain a structure um, before it becomes absolutely unusable or deteriorated beyond repair, which is the ter determination that's been made. And then once that once the structure becomes so deteriorated, there's no option to repair or maintain anymore or improve. It just needs to go away. So if it would have been maintained those years as a boathouse and usable and safe and meeting code requirements now, there would be an opportunity to retain that as is. Um, but because it's beyond, beyond that point of re repair, um, they kind of lose that grandfathering in, for lack of a term, to you to keep the structure in its existing location. Even though they're actually using it as a boathouse? Yeah, the building official was 
surprised to know that someone could potentially be using that because he's, you know, he said it's braced internally and externally with diagonal beams. Um, it's no longer anchored to the foundation. It's not strong enough to withstand normal um, environmental loads or weather conditions. It has no door. It's subject to uplift from wind loads. Um, the wall sheathing has either rotted or fallen off or been removed. It's structurally fragile. Um, it's weakened. So the foundation has degraded to a point that the river side of the building has no support or earth contact. So these are just some of the things structurally that the building official was able to observe. Um, the DNR um, did comment that these types of structures, you know, when they get to this point, there's, you know, there's just no saving the structure. Um, so that in order, now it kicks it into that different category. So um, it becomes the fact that they would need to, to meet all of the floodplain and riverway setback requirements and construction requirements in order to maintain that. And they just aren't able to do that at this point in the existing location. Can I just ask, uh, clarifying on, on this, is there a, a notice that goes out? And, and when was that inspection done on that property? The building official just based that observation off of the photos that were provided okay. um, because there was a question, you know, <clears throat> if, if this becomes a condition of the approval tonight, um, you know, what is the status of that structure? Could it be improved or restored? Um, and based on the new information that was introduced, the building official, we thought it was appropriate for him to comment on the existing condition to know whether or not it, it was eligible for rehabilitation. Um, could, could, oh, sorry. Same with the DNR. They said, you know, there's just no way to meet today's flood proofing standards, of course, the setbacks, but the construction materials that are acquired by code today, you can't retrofit those. It would have to completely come down altogether and be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it would be helpful to, again, this kind of gets back to what I was saying before, it'd be helpful to have you know, a meeting with them, my architect and my, con my contractor, um, has already been privy to this. Um, but we were hoping to address this, like I said, at a later date. Um, it just showed up on this. So uh, we have already looked at this structure and he felt really confident that we could rebuild it. Um, I don't know how you can meet code on a boathouse anyway. So I'm trying to you know, get my head around what's there and why it wasn't taken down. And then also what would require it to be, like how could it have been maintained to meet code, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, if you know it's it has it has a uh, you know the structure has been there for a lot of years and I, I don't know how long it's been in the shape that it is right now of course it's deteriorating by the day so um, I, but I was under the impression when I got the place that it was not going to be it was something that I could repair and uh, and I understand that this is now potentially an issue but it'd be great to have had some notice prior notice to to today and and, and a review by photo today uh, to actually determine if this is, you know, should be part of this discussion at all. And, um, and frankly, I just taking that aside, which I'd love to just have that aside, do a different conversation. This variance has, um, can be met. I think I'd like to see if we could get to a place where we could meet this particular variance and have a separate discussion on that. Is that, I mean, is that possible where we could get, um, you know, someone else to actually look at the structure and deal with this as a separate deal. Just, Madam Mayor, if, if I could just add, and I, it's certainly appropriate for the council if it decides to hold this off of this variance request and consider it separately. That being said, when you look at your bluff line, your uh, bluff line uh, shoreland ordinance section six hundred one is very very clear. Section six hundred one point zero four says if a substandard structure needs replacing due to de destruction, deterioration, or obsolescence, such replacement shall comply with the dimensional standards of this ordinance. It's not yeah. ambiguous. Yeah. Um, and so from a, from a notice perspective, it is not the city's responsibility to notify property owners uh, of the rules when it comes to destruction, deterioration, obsolescence. Um, this, a, a boathouse could potentially, if it met all the requirements, if this boathouse came down, another boathouse could be built on the property if it were permitted. I don't know if it is or not, but it would have to be built in compliance with your ordinances. And so that's that's the issue here. The issue isn't why was this boathouse 
allowed to stand in this location? Why is it there today? I mean, that's all interesting and, and you know, history of the property is, is interesting. But when you look at your ordinance as it exists today, the rule's pretty clear. Again, that being said, if you decide from a policy perspective that you want to deal with that separately and deal with that issue separately, you know, I presume staff would, would do that. Um, that being said, you do have a, an issue with respect to whether the boathouse actually meets your, your requirements. And uh, can I ask you a question here further on that? Um, mm -hmm. In that, in a variance request, uh, I, I recognize that we can have sort of plea bargain deals like we're looking at for consideration. Uh, where's the, isn't there a level of reasonableness that kind of comes to play in some of those considerations as far as tying one variance to uh, a separate situation such as this boathouse? And, and what would constitute making this reasonable? Well, as, as the applicant, you're requesting something of the city that's not permitted without a variance from their ordinance. ordinance. So you're asking for an exception. Hmm. So when the city reviews your application for an exception to the general rule, the city can impose conditions on what it grants to you as something that not everybody uh, gets under, under every circumstance. So the city council determines from a policy perspective what's, what's reasonable. And if they're going to allow you to build on the riverside um, and add to your structure on the, on the riverside, they also get to determine what conditions are necessary to allow you to, to do that. So cleaning up a non-conforming structure that they might have to deal with otherwise is certainly within the authority of, of the city council in having this discussion. Okay, yep, thank that you, makes Nick. sense. So it is up to you guys, obviously. That, yeah. Thank you for yeah, clarifying that. Yeah, that was very clear. Yeah. You look like you have a question, Connie. Um, no, that was very clear. Yeah. I just have a question. If we took, Put that aside. I mean, what what are the requirements or the variances for rebuilding? Like, let's say this was all off the table, mm -hmm. and he, he was only coming separately. to do a, to request to rebuild the boathouse. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, Adam what Mayor, what are the person. um based on the criteria in the ordinance? There is There's no, no potential for rehabbing or rebuilding the structure yeah. in the existing location. That the, I think the only thing that he could have at play here is if if he wants to make a decision about keeping his boathouse, maybe we'd be more willing to do that if we didn't already do this other variance. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're kind of allowing this other variance to happen, and, and, it's, and then we're saying you also have this condition with it, but he's like, oh, I really, really like my boathouse, but maybe I don't need that expansion. Maybe he wants to bargain with us on that. Do you, do you, I mean, is that... But Amir, I, to be fair, this conversation of the boathouse was just introduced this morning. So I know, right? We're, and that's the right. only reason it's part of this conversation. Um, when we look at variance applications, we look at the entire property and the nonconformities. And if they're, as Attorney Vivian indicated, if they're asking for an exception to the ordinance, we also take a look at what other conditions on the property could be improved to bring the property into closer compliance with the yeah. ordinance. In this case, this is a blighted structure that probably should have been removed years and years ago. But as we discussed in our workshop, you know, if, if no one complains, we, we're not out there actively enforcing um, code enforcement, or excuse me, <coughs> ordinance violations. Um, so this just was allowed to continue and deteriorate. So um, that's where we're at. And that's, I think that's important to include as part of this conversation because uh, there isn't a potential for improvement or rehab or restoring that it just, okay. just not an option so I think to better the property and improve the appearance from the river um, that's why staff has recommended these few conditions and one of them which is removal of that structure and, and if I can just add to that if you don't address the boathouse so let's say mm -hmm. you move forward with your your motion and you remove the boathouse from the conditions then potentially your staff will be dealing with the boathouse in the future. There's yeah. not a circumstance, as was indicated, that would allow for the renovation, the repair, the replacement based on, on your ordinance. So the, there's not going to be a brand new structure in this location under, under any circumstance. And so your, your options are really sort of ignore it and leave it for later. 
um, or address it as staff has requested as part of the conditions so that it's not an issue that has to be addressed in the, in the future by your building official mm -hmm. zoning um, and whatnot. Because technically we could as a city have gone in and said he needed to remove it Correct. without him ever coming to us with this other That's issue. exactly right, okay. yes. But I mean, we're, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Clarifying question. I think for us, our builder was gonna renovate it, so we just wanted to maybe have the building inspector not look at photos, but come and see the structure and feel I, the walls and. I, I understand what you're saying, but it sounds like no matter what, it's not within, like it's outside of the rules because of how close it is to the river that no matter what, you shouldn't, that structure shouldn't even be there. I, even, I would, that, is that am I understanding that correctly so so even I think no matter you can well. even if your builder architect thinks that they can do it it's just outside of the actual because of its condition be, because and of the, where it is located because of its location and the yes and, and the condition if they thought the condition wasn't as bad as what they assumed could that be different then or no matter what no if, if that structure were in good shape and you just decided that you wanted to do something different with it, repurpose it, renovate it, you, you couldn't do that as well because of where it's located. Because you are in that restricted zone, you're already a, a substandard structure in that zone. The city changed its rules but allowed those outbuildings to, to remain. The policy is that they can stay in their existing condition until they, until they can no longer stand and then they have to be removed um, in an effort to resolve those substandard buildings because the city the city and you know through its ordinances doesn't want to permit number one new buildings but secondarily it doesn't want to promote the continued use of existing buildings that are substandard on, under the code so it's it's a function of location and now it's a function of condition because we have a building inspector's report on the particular building, uh, but there's nothing that can be done to that building. It couldn't be even if it were in good structural sh uh, shape at this point. Did he come and look at it? No, the building he didn't. Inspector? I, no, this is all through the pictures today. Well, and, and we can all tell from the pictures that it's not in great, you even said it's not it's in great shape. No, but it's not. So, great shape. So yeah. would it, I mean, even if it was in good shape, you couldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. that's well, what it sounds if, like. So you would be, and maybe Attorney Vivian or, um, Somebody else on staff would be able to answer this. So if it had been maintained and structurally sound, basically they could have put a new roof on it if it needed it, or maybe put paint on it if it needed it, but nothing else, right? But it, now, now it's obviously way beyond a roof and paint, but is that Madam Mayor, fair to say? Council Member Dahl, that's correct. Yeah. The code's terminology is normal maintenance. So base, basic upkeep. Okay. Um, and, it, and that can be fairly judged from the photos. We have no doubt that it's beyond the roof that and the is Madam Mayor, where yeah. I was going with that. Madam Mayor, uh, the building official did not feel it was necessary to do an on-site physical in-person inspection to make some of the okay. determinations that he had provided. I feel like we have an I have enough information about it and I'm comfortable with the conditions that we have <clears throat> outlined. Uh, I feel like we've already given quite a bit to we've already approved a variance to give you the extra space on the third floor, if we approve it. So I feel like these conditions are fair. Can I ask a question before you go in for a vote then? Mm -hmm. um, if if you guys approve with the, the conditions, um, does it just, it moves forward as such, right? The conditions and the, the approval with that. Um, That's how it would be. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Unless you guys want to didn't want to do revoke it. this, yeah. right? They I don't know if I, I guess I don't see the point in that because as as Attorney Vivian said, it's going to have to be dealt with now because it's brought to it's the tent. Brought, yeah, because so we now with, know it's there. That's you know? a good question. Is it is so? Let's just say I you know this is approved and then we don't like does ultimately someone's going to come out and say you got to get rid of that thing. I think or that's what we'll get happen. another potentially yes potentially yeah. we just don't know uh, <clears throat> so I did I did speak with a municipal attorney before this and of course he had minimal amount of time as well and he did mention the that that Minnesota has a shoreline protection act for structures like this and my concern with moving forward on this um, with such limited time to get to actually explore what rights 
go beyond potentially the ordinance um, is that we're, we're kind of like, we're shoving it in, I feel like. So you feel and like there's other potential out I there think for you to other... be able to keep it where our staff feels like there isn't any potential? I feel like we have a couple people in the room with, with some opinions and, and what they know, but I think there's I think there could be more opportunities. I, and, I mean, and that's I, fair if you want to deal with it down the road. I guess it's just a separate thing then. And but, even if it was timeline related for us to, because this is so new information, we haven't been able to do much of our own understanding. But we, if you put a timeline, it had to be reconsidered by such and such. That's fair. It just hasn't been very new for our mm -hmm. yeah. and, understanding. And I know that we would, you know, that would mean potentially we're back here again. But I mean, who doesn't enjoy this time with us? I know. Right? Isn't it awesome? I mean, this I is would, great, right? I would also like to add that if we kept the other three, which we would keep the other three conditions, if we approve that those would be completed before you move forward with the actual addition on the third floor so we know that those things are getting done absolutely okay yeah. so, so what that, a discussion about that is that in the i mean that would have to be a friendly that amendment, would have to be right? something we mentioned the original right? motion yep madam mayor if i may um yeah. regarding the boathouse condition you know maybe there's a way that you could um and i'll defer to attorney vivian but make the recommendation as written as a condition to remove the boathouse, but if there is other information introduced that the structure has some sort of historical significance, that we bring that back to the council for consideration. Okay. Um, so then we don't have to for helpful. sure deal with it unless there's actually a, a, an avenue for you to go through. Yeah. Okay. I do not believe one exists, um, right, especially but... in a... And, and the condition that the structure is in, if there was any historical significance, that unfortunately has been lost or deteriorated. So um, I doubt that that is something that we'll need to reconsider, but we can, we can look at that. And I won't waste your time. I mean, we'll, we can, we, I can work with the city staff and, and what I can find out. We can figure that out on the back end. And of course, I think we, we don't have to come here and waste your time if we determine that there's nothing there. Yeah, I, I, like I think it would idea. also be fair to have the building official on site uh, to evaluate the, mm -hmm. the condition or the, the on-site condition, take pictures. Uh, obviously, if the city were going to require uh, that the boathouse be taken down, we would have an on-site inspection anyway um, to confirm the, the conditions. So mm -hmm. I mean, quite clearly the, the concern here is health, safety, welfare. Yeah. You know, it is blight on the river. Um, that's, that's an issue, but from my perspective, the, the bigger issue is we don't want the boathouse coming down on kids. Yeah. We don't want the boathouse yeah. coming down on users. And I'm sure you don't either. No. Um, and, and so it's, it's really, it's not a matter of the, the city saying we have rules and you need to follow them. It, it really is health, safety, welfare driven. Um, and that's, that's a part of it. So, you know, I, I think, you know, perhaps it would be appropriate for the condition to indicate that you know perhaps a review will be uh, completed within the next 30 days 60 days you know some some period of time so that you can complete your research on the historical significance we can have the building official on site take pictures review it um, and either way there's going to have to be a determination that's that's going to, to be made mm -hmm. um, but you know perhaps we say that out, uh, you know, within 30 days or within 60 days, um, if it's not determined that there's historical significance or if it's not determined that the um, building is habitable, then it needs to come down. Right. I mean, I, I don't want to I don't want to mm -hmm. set it out so that these folks have to come back and we're talking right. about a determination. Yeah. Yep. You know, if there is historical significance, well, then we look at it. If the building official determines that it's habitable or that it's usable in a safe condition, you know, okay, but absent one of those two things, then, then the boathouse has to come down and we can move forward with this process. Yeah, I'll add that to my motion, okay. as he just explained. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to reiterate all that. <laughs> we, that's what I was just gonna ask. We sort of need that distilled down in a way that's yeah. motion friendly. Um, and I don't I feel really like have the answer for that. I, Ma I feel like we can. Madam Mayor, I think yeah. we, we get we the get gist of it. Do we want to specify 30 days I for that? Six, just to verify? I think 60 just because of 
people's lives, but I'm, I mean, I'm just saying it. So, 30 days is not a long so time. So what factors into that though, then is we kind of have an open-ended situation where do we allow other things to proceed, especially considering oh. that you said other things oh, need I'm to sorry. be completed before they could start work. So you're saying, I thought it, we're just saying on those two stipulations about where they get to research if it has historical significance and we're gonna send the building inspector out on site, that that would happen within 30 days or 60 days? Is that, that's, that's the that's question, what just those two things. Yes. Again, I feel, but I mean, can, just trying to get schedules together, it's hard. So I, I just don't know if 30 days is, is enough or if that's, you know, but spring are you break. Saying, and, I wanna understand, Matt, are you saying that if you put this, they can't go forward with anything else before yeah. this. Well, so, oh, is that true? See, that's no. what I was under. That's no. what I wanted to make oh, sure. Oh, Madam Mayor, members of the council. So they can definitely proceed, but you had a stipulation that they could not proceed with any other renovations until the conditions were Jeez. met. I would say so this the delay other is, three conditions. It, okay. No? Nope. We just want a clarification on that. Hmm. So um, that's up to you as a policy. That's so. a good point, because then we don't have the can I recourse on that can, one. can I suggest oh. that we, um, if, if, if this moves through and the, this particular fourth item has a 30, 60 day clock, whatever it is, that once we, uh, once it's approved, we move forward, but then at the moment that it is deemed not, if it, it is not uh, deemed uh, historical or whatever, then uh, it just has to go down. Like it just has to mm -hmm. go away. Now, there's some pervious square footage uh, that would change in that environment, right? So maybe it's 20% that we're passing, right? Mm -hmm. But things might change then a little bit on what our availability is of impervious square footage after that would go down. Is yeah, that fair? That would be worked out with staff later. Yeah, and we if just you do that take the vote house down, then yeah. maybe other things could some change. Movement on other areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that. Okay. So where does that leave us exactly with what we need to how do you guys feel about thirty or sixty days for the figuring it out if this boathouse is coming down? Thirty? That am I being too generous? I, I would I don't know. Everything's so slow these days, but I know. I typically would have said thirty days, but any other thoughts? Can I suggest 45 and we can Oh, look at that. The difference. 45 days. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with 45. That's a fair splitting of the difference. When do you intend to begin construction on your project? Um, you know, as soon as possible. As soon as possible, yeah. I mean, it'll take us a while to get some. It'll probably take us 30 days to get to breaking ground. It'll be in April. It's the only reason I ask is because if, you know, if we're looking at 30 days or 40, 45 days, it'd be nice for your construction timeline to line up with the final determination mm -hmm. so that everything is moving forward at the same time. Yeah. I think we have a lot of different issues to consider. Yeah, too. we definitely do. I think the sooner, if it's possible, we're going to move pretty inspector. fast. I think we can counsel the best of time for us to work with what the state. Madam Mayor, members of council, mm -hmm. if I will. Um, there, there's some significant um, material that needs to be provided, uh, an updated survey um, and different things like that. The WMO probably has to get reinvolved um, with the additional stuff. Um, so there will be some significant um, <clears throat> uh, review mm -hmm. too. And so I think that 45 days, um, I know road restrictions are also going on here um, at the end of this week. Um, so that always puts a damper on some of the construction items. Um, so I think 45 days is is viable. So okay. before we, I feel like we're getting close to voting here, I um, just want to get my yes. two cents in there. Um, f and again, <laughs> I, I love everything I've been shown here. I love boathouses. I, I mm -hmm. think they're charming. I'm a huge fan of them. Um, this, this has been probably one of my top handful, six or seven most interesting things since I've been on council. And um, I've been kind of all over the map on this. And I always go back to my gut. And my gut is erring on the side of, 
you know, we originally had findings of fact that I think I heard Sarah spent upwards of kind of 80 hours on this situation. And that's a, a ton of staff time. And she did that. And now we kind of threw that away and said, we don't like your answer. And please give us the answer we want to hear. And um, I am not comfortable voting in favor of this. I wouldn't be comfortable with construction starting until the boathouse factor is concluded. Yeah, that was part so, of the deal. Was that nothing would like? So, um, yeah, for for the reasons I explained, uh, yeah. I, I, I just yeah. having a hard time supporting. Yeah, this. I understand where you're coming from because my gut feels the other way around. My gut feels like it can't. <clears throat> like there's there's just not a good enough reason <clears throat> to not allow them to expand that third floor because it doesn't increase the footprint of them to expand that third floor because it doesn't increase the footprint. It's not affecting the riverway. I don't think the view is any different for the people on the river. And I think we also have this flexibility then to put these other conditions of approval on it. So it's, it's giving us more that we can do to help the environment in the river by approving it than denying it. So that's, that's how I feel about it. Um, I uh, guess we need two other people to agree with me or we're wasting a lot of time discussing all of this. I need so to maybe, that's why I thought maybe we should have gone through the, the vote process before we wasted a lot of time. Mm. But Can I add one uh, piece here? I just want to uh, ask, we have a approval for the North Edition yes. uh, already in place. And I'm not sure how that plays into this part of the discussion of the timing on the I boathouse because separate. would we, yeah, could we start if we got through the stuff that we needed to on that end mm -hmm. of it, might we be able to start on portions? Yeah, I don't think okay. we had any issues with you starting on that North Edition, okay. even All right. after then we approved it last no month. No conditions. No, nothing on placed I mean, on yeah, the North Edition. Yeah, you already had that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's well, Madam, Madam Mayor, let, yeah. let's clarify. Sorry, Madam Mayor, Mayor's Council. Um, th there's no conditions, but there are stipulations that include uh, stormwater management yeah. and different things. Yeah, they like already had that, that plan. We didn't put those conditions on that, that it was a requirement to complete those before that work was done. So Right. Okay. But they will do that. Yes. We trust they will. Well, no matter what, I, I wish you guys nothing but the best on your remodel project. I know what it's like to go through re extensive remodels like that, and it's a bugger. And uh, you, you have uh, my support from that standpoint that I hope it all goes up well and you get what you want. So. Do we have any more discussion, or should we vote? Do we feel like we know what we're voting on? I'm ready to vote. Okay. So my motion would be amended to include all of the, those extra stipulations about him having a chance to do research to see if it's got a historical significance or some other reason that it would be left, the boathouse, or, and then also have the inspector come out and do an on-site visit within 45 days. And then also amend that the... Uh, the con after that point, all of those conditions that were listed, all four of them would need to be done before they actually move forward with the East addition. Okay. So, so does that need to be, doesn't that need to be like a friendly so amendment? And yeah, now do we need to have a second on my amended motion? Do we have a second, Ethan? <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> second on before? Okay. So now do we do a roll call vote? Or is, okay. Everyone's ready. Yep. Um, Council Member Carlson. It's an aye or a yay? Which yes, aye yes, or right. nay. That's what we do Don't on our council. Wrong. All right. So what did you aye. say? Yes. Council yay. Aye. Aye. Oh, We say aye. Oh, my gosh. The, the planning commission has totally thrown right. us off our game. I'll do like my grandson does. Two thumbs up. <laughs> council Member Dahl. Nay. Council Member Gilmore. Aye. Council Member Hill. Aye. Mayor Hansen. Aye. Motion carries. Finally right, did you. it. We did it. We we got through all of that after probably a hundred plus hours. So can I just say I just want to thank I appreciate all of you for the work on this. I know I've said that a million times, but thank you for all the work. I think what John Dahl said here was appropriate. Um, we've all put a lot into it and I I'm very much appreciate that. So it's thank you. Good luck. Thank you. you. Best wishes, yeah. guys.
yeah, hopefully it finds some historical significance with that boathouse because it is it's very, very cool. Okay, where is my agenda? So now we have new business, uh, considering authorization for SCH to proceed with plans and specs for a culvert lining project and related work on Point Road. And Matt's gonna present this item. Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, <clears throat> this was brought up a couple of months ago um, about the possibility of needing maintenance on the culvert on Point Road that connects essentially the wetland area south of the Excel Center and Anderson Bay. Um, we did culvert inspections in 2021 after there was a failure up on 7th Street North of a similar type of culvert. And we went around to try and determine, well, what, what's the shape of our other culverts? Um, this was identified. Um, um, SEH came out and actually inspected it as much as they could um, and deemed that, yes, it's an issue. We've had a couple lining companies come out and um, Thanks, Nick. Uh, essentially give us a go that yes it's feasible to line this um, the other option would be to open trench it um, but the, from a public safety standpoint and a feasibility standpoint um, it's not altogether practical and we would much rather have it lined um, before we have before we need to do an open trench um, so what we're asking there is some permitting involved and also some engineering involved um, regarding this lining, the permitting includes um, wetland permits and um, St. Croix River permitting. Um, and so there's some significant costs with those two items. Um, and then um, just to make sure th this lining is kind of unique compared to like a lining of a sewer, it's not quite as straightforward. Um, and so we want engineering plans and specs for specific to that large scale lining. Um, so with that said, staff is recommending that City Council adopt a motion authorizing SEH to proceed with plans and specs for culvert lining and related work. Um, this also includes going out to bid for the project. Um, I'll stand for questions. Does anyone have any questions for Matt? Um, just a real basic question, Matt. Is that something that, and I'm not endorsing this company or anything, but that, like Miller? excavating wood handler is that not something that would be in their so house typically if if it was a um an open trench where they we were replacing the entire line absolutely and we actually had them out for an estimate um, and their estimate was significantly higher than lining it yeah so, so lining it's fair to say is sort of a specialty absolutely there's um a one minnesota company that did it and then there's another company who's kind of like a national company but their large lining is out of based out of florida so um it is very specialized yes okay thank you i really appreciate that we're staying ahead of this and fixing it before it becomes a major issue so i think it's yeah so lining it. um madam mayor members of council sorry to interrupt but um um it has worked very well for our sewer lining um, and that's kind of where this lining got started, but then they started getting bigger and bigger um, for specialty ones like that um, because there is a market for um, essentially culverts and different pipes that are not quite deteriorated enough for complete replacement. Um, so they're perfect candidates for this. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool technology if you've mm -hmm. not yep. seen it before. It's pretty, I think it is. I'm uh, prepared to make a motion see if anyone else has any other questions or comments or no, no. okay Good. go ahead Good. Thanks. um i'll move to authorize sch to proceed with plans and specifications for a culvert lining project and related on point road as it's been presented to us a second. all right thanks john thanks ethan now we need a roll call vote uh council member carlson aye council member Dahl. aye council member gilmer Aye. Council Member Hill? Aye. Com Mayor Hansen. <laughs> Aye. It's okay. It'll take a while. All eyes. Do. All right. Thank you, Matt. Um, City Council liaison reports. Do we, who, we want to start with Ethan to my sure. left here? 
so they met last week when we were uh, meeting for two special meetings here, but I do have the minutes in front of me. Okay, tell us uh, what, tell us who met. Oh, I'm met. sorry, the That's right. Commission. <laughs> yeah, not everybody remembers. Yep, right? okay, there we go. Uh, so yeah, they did a formal approval of the 2023 budget. Um, they added uh, $10,615 to afford a 5% wage increase to try to keep up with inflation. Um, approval of disbursements. They did a review of the CIP. They relocated a little bit of money to purchase a new tripod and micro or microwaves, microphones. <laughs> um, and then they uh, did election of officers, and I believe they stayed the same um, as to what they were before. And it looks like. Oh, just a subcommittee representative to prepare a current franchise agreement expiring this June. Oh. And uh, somebody <coughs> else volunteered to take on that role. Um, you didn't volunteer? I wasn't there. I was here. <laughs> just kidding. They didn't volunteer you? I would have volunteered for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what I can gather just based on the minutes. Um, all that's, right. that's all I've got. Yeah. If you can't go next time, let me know. I think I'm well, supposed to be here. Oh, was that it? it was that was the deal. Oh, and that's we what it was. Okay. So yeah, unless that's a never mind. Of course, I would let you know. Okay. I know you like. Meetings. I love to go to. You should see. Like, I have. When we get to my report, there's been a lot of meetings. Okay, Connie. Well, I have report? nothing to report. <gasps> yay! I mean, yay! Then now we make a shorter meeting. All right, uh, Katie. Uh, BCal this last month they paid their taxes. Uh, they're talking about doing the magnets again with all the dates of all the activities that are coming up. Um, Easter egg hunt is going to be April 8th, and they're looking for volunteers from 9 to 11. So you can always contact BCAL for that. And then they were talking about um, insurance again, mainly the whole time. <laughs> it was a lot of time. It was a lot of insurance talk. Who's covering where and where? where is everybody covered and... You know, just just since of, you oh, I'm sorry. yeah, no, go ahead. Just since you guys are here and you're all be called up all the time, um, I had a resident ask me about the Easter egg hunt, and is it? it I remember when my kids were little, there was a small child-friendly area, yes, and then the that's, greater. Mm -hmm. That's the plan again. It's still, they've oh, yeah. done that. That's what yes, I said. Yeah, and it's at Barker's oh, Alps. Yeah. Okay. And Thank then you. they do have like if it's gonna rain or snow like a drive-through that they would do oh, where you could yeah. come and still get your eggs. Yeah, I mean, or at least candy. Yeah, I don't candy, know how it's gonna work, yeah. but yeah. Bag full of candy. Okay. All right, John? Thank you. Um, uh, we didn't have any business to conduct, so I do not have. Your watershed? Is that what you're no, about? What it's, are you it's WMO, uh, oh, yeah. Mill St. Croix yeah, watershed, watershed management. management. Yeah. We okay. didn't meet last month. We will be meeting this Thursday. Okay. So I have some liaison appointments and I also had just some other meetings and I thought I'd let you guys know just what I've been up to so no one's surprised. I had the opportunity and I last month I was really bad. I didn't have anything. I was like, I know I've done things. What was it? So I have one from January. I met with Sergeant Jackson, who's here tonight, just to get a chance to get to know him a little better now that I'm mayor. So that was fun. And that reminded me when I talked to you that when I first joined council, I did a ride along with the police. And I don't know if Katie, if you're interested or either of you gentlemen that uh, probably never had the opportunity to do that. And you've been on for a while now. I'm interested. Yeah, I think you guys should do that. It's really, really cool to see what they do. And I don't mean to interrupt, but you can no, also do snow plows. Oh yeah, yeah that I heard good. that on when I went to my little meeting. Min dot snow yeah. plows? Or no, you works. could do baby, Ours? yeah, yep. So it, really, it, yeah, it's part of being the council. <laughs> bet members would love that. Yeah. I bet Josh would love it if I rode along with him, right? Okay. Uh, Matt and I had the chance to meet with the superintendent of the school district. Uh, he's new, uh, Dr. Funk, um, kind of just helping to build the relationship there between the schools and the city. We did that on February 2nd. We also met with uh, Chris Johnson from St. Croix Rec to talk about the Centennial Pavilion. So we're moving forward with that. And then the council at the workshop tonight uh, chose colors for the pavilion. And we've got a little update on how we're proceeding. That's probably not gonna be going in until the fall as we talked about because of timelines. 
I also, on February 7th, I met with um, Bob Dickey from People's Congregational Church at his request. He wanted to teach me a little bit more about how they use their property at Barker's Alps. Um, February 8th, I had a meeting with a school board member, Pete Kelsenberg, again, just to keep that relationship going with, between the school board and the city. Uh, February 13th, I attended the Bayport Fire Relief Association board meeting. Um, I didn't know a lot about the Relief Association, so I have to thank Chief Isinger. He gave me a little overview at the meeting, and I learned that, this is, this is what I found online after, but so the Volunteer Fire Relief Association is a government entity that receives and manages public money, and in our case, it's money from the state of Minnesota, to provide retirement benefits for individuals providing the governmental services of firefighting or emergency first response. So it's a separate entity from the fire department and it's governed by its own board. And our board is, um, includes Mike Gallowitz as the president and Steve, how do you say his last name, Biggie, is the VP. Dustin Vincent's our secretary and Ray Valley's our treasurer and they're doing a great job and I wanna thank them for stepping up and, and doing that because it's time consuming. I know they get paid for it, right? They get a separate stipend, nothing? They do? Yeah, but still, it's time. They could be with their families or going to a movie. Um, they really have been great stewards of the money from what I learned at the meeting and they were looking at how to maximize return on their investments and did some moving around of funds in order to make, um, make it better. So keeping an eye on it. And um, I don't know if you guys heard, but they tried a fishing tournament fundraiser, an ice fishing tournament fundraiser. 24 people reg registered and um, it was their first year, but they lost about $500, but they'll do better when they try it again. They're gonna um, get more advertising out there. Uh, February 21st, uh, Sergeant Jackson was there with me and Chief Eastman at the Minnesota Correctional Facility Community Advisory Committee. Um, not a lot of discussion. There wasn't actually an agenda. We just kind of went around the room and met each other because it hasn't met, I think, since COVID. And um, the number one takeaway that I had was that they're short-staffed at the prison, both prisons actually, which is not surprising. It's kind of happening everywhere. Uh, February 21st, I met with members of a household on 9th Street about a sewer backup concern that they had and it's been resolved as much as possible with the help of city staff. Thank you, Matt, for your help on that. And then we met with Commander Quick from the Legion to talk about the Centennial Pavilion on the 22nd. Legion seems very excited about the project and grateful that we're able to help find a way to commemorate both of the, cen the centennials. Uh, February 23rd, I attended the King Plant Community Stakeholder Meeting. Sarah was there as well, and that's in her update. And then on the 24th and 5th of February, I was at the League of Minnesota Cities Elected Leaders Institute Advanced Program in Plymouth. And the uh, best part of that is networking with the other city officials and just kind of hearing what's going on in their towns and how they're dealing with issues. Also some great educational programming. Stevie Ray came on Saturday and he was amazing. Um, Katie was there. She didn't give that in her update because no. it's not her liaison, but so um, sounds like you learned a lot of stuff online before yeah. you even went. Yeah. So they had online programming too, which we didn't. But. And then the last, no, almost lastly, the Lake Elmo Advisory Commission met on the 27th in Baytown. I didn't know much about that commission either, and it's actually super interesting. Their whole uh, goal is to further the general wel welfare of the community and the Lake Elmo Airport through maintaining or resolving problems created by the aircraft operations of the airport. So there is this wonderful woman named Jennifer Lewis who fields all of the calls. She's with the MAC, uh, what is that? Minneapolis Airport Commission or something? And so this is, this is what she taught us. In, um, <laughs> in the final quarter of 2022, there were 637 complaints about the Lake Elmo Airport. Yeah. Yes, and that all came from one household. Yeah, this all woman is a saint, I know. So that's compared to 2021, there was 101 complaints in the whole year. And that was probably, what did she say, like just two or three households that whole year that made those 101 complaints. 46 the prior year, 47 the prior year. So 
she has been handling that household and dealing with the complaints and just trying to educate them. And she's so amazing, just very calm about the whole thing. So, and then just before our last meeting, I had a chance on February 27th, I met with Tom Luna and he wanted to just check in on my first couple months as being the mayor, which was really nice. And I actually, on March 1st, had the tour of the library. Did anyone else go on a tour of the library? <gasps> it's really nice. So nice. they're excited to open. It's, uh, Jill said she was thinking on Wednesday, but I, it didn't look like they were gonna be that close. Does anyone know what the status is? Have you heard? Oh, it's okay. kind of been. Yeah, there's a lot of little pieces that have like it, to yeah. come together, furniture, decorations, all of that, and getting all the books on the shelves, but they were working on that when I was there. So excited about that. So sorry that's so long. Hopefully this is a one-time thing and I'm not gonna have that many meetings and updates in the future. Just my, hopefully, just a couple of liaison things. And I also meet with Matt once a week and it's awesome. We, we're really uh, getting to know each other. Was um, for the library. Was there going to be a like an open how like a kickoff yes. yeah. event? Yeah. Yes, not there till is. April though, right? Yeah, well, there was going to be like a soft open, and then yeah, they were going to have okay. something. Yeah, there's I, like a kids opening and an adult opening. I think to just with it not being opening as soon, I think she doesn't really come up with a date unless she did just you guys know of in the last. Oh, the actual when the doors open? Yeah. No, when they'd when have a, like events. a grand yeah. opening or a... Oh, I thought she had them on, I had them on my calendar. There was but two I, different ones. No, right, but I thought, well, I thought she wasn't sure because of oh. everything getting pushed back. But like oh, I said, I haven't be. talked to her okay. this week, so could be. I can double check with her And I can't remember if she had anything in her update. Okay, so staff reports, Matt. Madam Mayor, um, I'll call on... Um, Sergeant Jackson for PD report. Madam Mayor, Council Members, um, I will stand on Chief's absence here to go through her update. I will apologize if I lose my voice. I've been fighting a cold for the last week and a half, so I get a little mm -hmm. froggy if I'm talking. Um, <clears throat> this might have been on the last update, too. We had the uh, police department did a tour that was conducted by Officer Rakowski. Um, January 30th, um, we finalized our training schedule with our post board training for the year. Um, as the mayor mentioned earlier, uh, we were both present for the community advisory meeting with the Department of Corrections um, and the stakeholders there, um, the wardens, different uh, people within the prison and community leaders. Um, and then the 21st of February, we did our taser qualification training with the Oak Park Heights Police Department um, involving all the officers. On February 24th, uh, we received a um, grant through AED Life Pack um, that allowed us to get four additional AEDs to have our squad cars to respond to cardiac emergencies. Mm. Um, Officer Larry Cornell secured that grant for us. Uh, pretty happy about that to get those in our squad cars. Um, and all of our officers have been uh, trained on that with the exception, I think, of one. Um, but they are currently uh, in the squad cars ready to go. And then March 1st, uh, we completed our uh, weapons qualification up at the Oak Park Heights Prison Range, um, which is a nice facility that we get to use. Uh, upcoming events, uh, not on the agenda, was just March 29th is our cold weather and low light qualification shoot. Um, that just gives us, uh, it's one of the post mandated requirements because we're Minnesota and things get cold. So we have to you know, wear hats and gloves when we do some of this training. Um, as well as do low, low light level shooting. Uh, to be determined, um, we're still waiting to hear if the, about the OSHA camera grants for City Hall here. April 26th is going to be our pepper ball chemical training and Narcan training for all of the officers included with uh, the Oak Park Heights Police Department. And hopefully April, to be determined, uh, we'll have more information about the uh, canine and the arrival date for Officer Cornell's dog. Um, I believe he did confirm to me today it is going to be a black lab. So mm -hmm. that is exciting. Mm -hmm. That should be coming up here shortly. Uh, total incidences and self-initiated responses to date as of February 11th were 934. I will stand for any questions that you have. Oh, thank you. Thanks for standing in for Chief Neesman. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Jackson. Uh, Chief Eisinger, Fire Department report. Madam Mayor, Council members, 
Uh, February call volume was 92. Uh, we did have some unique, unique calls. We had a plane crash. We assisted uh, Hudson on a big structure fire. And then we had our own structure fire in West Lakeland Township where we had a great knockdown and minimal dam damage, although th there's some repairs that need to be uh, done at the house. Uh, that's compared, uh, the 92 is compared to 76 runs in 2022. Our year-to-date volume is 181 compared to 159 in 2020, or excuse me, 2022. Our monthly drills were right to no hazardous material and small equipment operations. We're continuing on with our fire inspections as well as plan reviews. Uh, in addition to the Relief Association that uh, Madam Mayor mentioned, we had our officers meeting. Uh, we did have a Washington County Fire Chiefs meeting this month already and the fire improvement team. With that, I'll stand for questions. I just have a comment um, in the interest of public safety who are, who are concerns fires that um, there was a small outdoor fire, electrical fire that started at my neighbor's house and it happened at about midnight on, I believe it was a Saturday night recently and, and um, their neighbors caught it and these people had their granddaughter staying over and they, so just an attaboy to people for neighbors looking out for neighbors. And if you see something suspicious to, you know, it was snowy and it wasn't probably fun to throw your boots on and go out there, but they found the fire and um, it was able to get put out in a very timely fashion due to some neighbors looking out for neighbors. So I, I actually saw that neighbor on my walk on yesterday and thanked him personally for doing that. And he was like, oh, it's no big deal, that kind of a thing. So. That was really nice. And I think we also put together a, a I signed a thank you card for the family that, that nice. did that. So yeah. yeah, it is great when people are watching out for each other. It does. The, yeah. the fire department's currently up in Oak Park Heights on a chimney fire now oh. where the neighbors saw the flames coming out. So <gasps> yeah, it does. Yeah. Oh, but no. it's, it's, it's all, all good? down and everything. Okay. So. All right. Thank yeah, you. thanks for mentioning that, John. Yep. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, Assistant Administrator Taylor. Madam Mayor and members of the council, uh, the next edition of the city's print newsletter, Bayport News, is in process. Distribution is anticipated for late March or early April. Um, at the request of the property owner, staff has decided to defer the land appraisal for the Land and Water Legacy Project until such time the property owner feels it's appropriate to reconsider a potential project. Periodic updates will be provided to the city council as more information is available. On February 27th, the City Council and Planning Commission held a joint meeting to consider an annexation petition and single-family residential concept development plan for approximately 20 acre, 28 acres of land located off of Stagecoach Trail, just north of Inspiration um, and south of the Fire Department in Baytown. Uh, over the next few months, the developer, developer will be working to address several of the outstanding items outlined in the staff report and or cited at the meeting before the city will initiate a formal consideration of the annexation or accept any zoning or subdivision applications for a development. A formal application is not expected from the developer until late spring or early summer. Uh, the Excel Energy Community Outreach Stakeholder Meeting was held on February 23rd and focused on regulatory requirements associated with decommissioning of the plant and historical remediation efforts on similar Excel Energy sites and plants. Uh, the next meeting has been scheduled for May 8th and will include a tour of the existing plant and potential redevelopment site. And I was able to find out that the library grand opening event is scheduled for April 21st from 7 to 9 for adults and April 26th from 3.30 to 5.30 for families and children. Perfect. I Thank stand you. for questions. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. I, I would just encourage anybody. I, I had the opportunity to work in the King plant. I'm an electrician. Um, Oh, probably 15, maybe 20 years ago. Um, it's it's a pretty fascinating place to visit. So anybody that uh, has an opportunity, I highly, highly recommend it and learn what we take for granted and what goes into it is mm -hmm. uh, pretty mind boggling. boggling yeah. in my I opinion. had a tour years ago. I can't remember why it was through the city council, but now in May, the next meeting for that is a tour of the plan for anyone that's on that. Um, stakeholders group so yeah all right uh, 
Let's see. City Council items and announcements. I'm going to just do more talking, I guess. <laughs> oh, Matt. Oh, I forgot my yeah. app. Forgot about you, Matt. <laughs> Matt, call on yourself. I, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I don't I have too much things. Pulled up. It's just Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, uh, just to go through a couple things, I want to thank the Public Works Department. They've been doing a great job kind of in my absence, um, keeping up with snowplow events uh, and different um, items like that. Um, they even got a portion of the public works building painted. So, and, and that hadn't been done in like 15 years. So, nice. um, we are working towards lead and copper, lead and copper inventory. Um, we've talked about that several times over the past uh, probably year. Um, we've started collecting some information. So, if residents um, see an orange door knocker on their door, um, it's the public works department trying to um, essentially get in and see what the material is, where your water line comes in. Um, what we're really interested in is how many places have copper, plastic, or galvanized. Um, and depending on how our system tests for lead and copper, then we'll be required to, at some point, replace those um, galvanized lines. Um, the city of Bayport does not have a high amount. In fact, there's no full lines of lead in Bayport. There might be some... Um, just short connectors um, because they they use that um, with the galvanized lines. So um, the financial management plan, we talked about that today at the workshop. Um, staff has been making slow progress on getting that RFP out. Um, it still is the intent to try and get it here in time for the 2024 budget and get that finalized. Um, and so we'll, we'll be trying hard to make that happen. Um, City staff met with SEH to do um, essentially cemetery GIS mapping. Um, right now, we have a paper copy that we use to identify where people are in the cemetery. Um, the hope would be that at some point in the near future that we would offer this service online where you could actually search for people that you knew in the cemetery um, rather than having to call us up um, or and then be able to uh, essentially locate it um, which will be nice. Um, city staff has been asking for this for like since I had GIS mapping. Sarah looks for, very excited. Yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> cool. It's really cool. Um, the I had a meeting with um, reps from the that are doing the from Washington County that are coordinating the um, essentially study and recommendation on the mid Middle Saint Croix Valley Regional Trail. Um, unfortunately, it's their plan is to no longer run it through downtown Bayport. That was one of the options um, from a feasibility standpoint and yeah, ease, well, whatever. From a feasibility standpoint, running it along Stagecoach Trail is, is a better option from what they came up with. Um, whether we agree with them or not, um, they did say that um, essentially they will support us in any way that they can to try and make connector trails essentially. So if that includes um, somehow making a loop connection from where we talked about behind the warden's house and up Fifth Avenue, um, or even potentially through the Parker's Alps Trail and through this new development that we're potentially having, that we can somehow create loops to the main trail. Um, now, the, again, this is only a planning process and it's the recommended stretch there's no timeline on when the actual regional trail would get built so um, and then finally street maintenance um, the city engineer and myself will be going to complete a, a rating study essentially here in the next probably two months um, we do that we complete that about every three years um, and it um, just gives us a rough idea what the conditions of our streets in um, do they need a seal coat um, do they need to reconstruct rather soon? Um, and essentially, we put together a huge Excel, Excel spreadsheet that outlines um, the rating and future maintenance needs. So with that, I'll stand for questions. You've been busy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the staff at Public Works for managing on their own, pretty much, and uh, all the plowing they've been doing. Uh, it's been uh, great, I think. The, I know there's some roads that are really hard, that, like my alley, for example, on the south end is always going to have ice on it in the winter just because it's too shady. But um, 
they came and helped make it less. I've, I've only fallen twice. So. Oh. <laughs> okay, you beat that one. Yeah, You've yeah, been better. down three times. Have you down three? Oh. I had a bruise. That's great. All right, so now I guess we're on to city council items and announcements. Does anyone else have anything they want to add before I read um, a statement? Anything that you didn't mention before? Okay. All right, so the council does know that I'm going to read this statement, and it's uh, it's about a page long, so I'll read the thing too long. Uh, I want to express my disappointment with the discussion at the February 28th Oak Park Heights City Council meeting relative to the fire department service agreement that Bayport has with their city, Baytown Township, and West Lakeland Township. Contrary to how Bayport was portrayed at that meeting and in the related staff memo and resolution, our city staff and council have consistently expressed an interest in working together to protect the future welfare of the partners. Specifically, on November 10th, 2021, re representatives from all four parties met at the seven-year service agreement review meeting. At that time, all the partners were in agreement that protecting the long-term viability of the Bayport Fire Department was a priority and pledged to develop review and support remedies to address both long-term and short-term funding shortfalls. To help advance the process of reimagining the contract, Bayport not only followed up after that meeting, meeting with the budgetary information that had been requested by Oak Park Heights, but subsequently sought to arrange follow-up meetings to collaborate on potential solutions. Instead of agreeing to a follow-up meeting, the Oak Park Heights subcommittee members sent us a letter on May 13th, 2022, making two requests. The first request was that we provide a written proposal outlining our suggestions for remedying the situation. Of course, we had originally hoped that all parties would work together to find a solution, but we understood the benefit of having a starting point for discussion. So our city staff worked diligently crunching numbers and reviewing scenarios to come up with a proposal for review. The final proposal sent to all partners on February 14th, 2023, suggested thoughtful and fair amendments to the current agreement to deal with existing funding shortfalls. The proposal also suggested that a review board be formed to agree upon which partner's individual annual budget allocations, I'm sorry, each partner's individual annual budget allocations to help plan for future equipment purchases and potential future staffing costs. Again, this was a proposal designed to launch further discussions. Nothing about this document was final, nor was it presented as such. In fact, the proposal literally ended with, quote, we respectfully offer this proposal as a starting point from which we can mutually develop a more detailed plan, end quote. The second request from the Oak Park Heights subcommittee was that we indicate whether we were willing to discuss alternative long-term fire service options, including hiring a consultant. To this, we responded in our proposal that we would be willing to discuss hiring a consultant but believe that prior to any of us making such a substantial investment, it would be beneficial for each partner to conduct its own preliminary due diligence to evaluate alternative options for discussion. Again, this was a proposal, a starting point to get everyone to the table because it's clear that planning is necessary to avoid an unquestionable cost explosion when the current contract ends. As always, we believe our communities are stronger together than apart. I'm confident that all the partners would agree, and I look forward to working in collaboration to find the best solution for all, whether that is with or without a consultant. Just, that's it. Anyone else have anything they wanna add or say that's related or not related to that topic? No. All right, I guess I have a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Well, thanks, Connie. Nice yeah, second. Thanks, Katie. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Yeah. No opposed. All right. Yeah. yeah.